Hi, I'm Dave, TJN, the Jesus Network. It is time to change the planet, and we are right here in the middle of things at the Oregon Justice Conference. It's here at the Oregon Convention Center in Portland, Oregon. Ministries and groups from all over the world are here talking about promoting the cause of justice in Christian communities and otherwise. And Aaron Esparza is with me from Multnomah School of the Bible, and he's involved in, uh, I understand, the journalism school at uh, Multnomah School of the Bible. Yes, I am. I'm a double major in Bible theology and communication studies, and I'm the editor of the school's online student magazine, The Multnomah Muse, and I'm here just covering the conference, um, getting to see what's going on, and it's really exciting. Uh, a lot of the, uh, the speakers are coming from angles that we don't hear often in today's society, so it's just great. You know, before we did this interview, I was really excited about what God has put on your heart as far as communications, the theory of communications, and share with us about what you want to do as far as mediating and, and helping ministries work together. Okay. Well, um, besides journal journaling and uh, going around interviewing people also, um, I'm interning for mediation, which is conflict resolution and management uh, in a specialized field. But my particular interest is going and doing missional mediation and going around the world. And um, so far, I'm far from that. Uh, but I've been on a couple of mission trips. Uh, I've been in the Philippines the past, um, past summer for two months. And I noticed that when agencies go around the world, um, sometimes they are disconnected from each other. And if they could be working together and allocating the resources and, and sharing with each other the common purpose and goal, I think a great progress can be made, especially for um, continuing social justice and even just working together. Um, and of course, as I was talking to you and you gave me the example of how uh, tribes can see the, the conflict between denominations even fighting, and that's a passion that I have myself, um, and seeing people work together for this common purpose. And so it could be five years from now, I'm not sure, but um, I have my basic mediation training done and I'm looking to get more. I'm um, studying in Beaverton with my mentor, uh, Dr. Randy Kennison, in Genesis Mediation. And so far, I love it. It's challenging, um, especially because mediators tend to specialize in fields, and they have to know something before they can really give that common you know, understanding and wisdom. And I'm still young. I don't have a master's or a PhD. I'm just about to get my four-year degree, but I want to learn and I want to be there and serve around the world. Now, one of the things that he's seeing, we're seeing as well, as far as the need for ministries, especially overseas, well, here in the United States as well, to work together. One example that I see even here is the issue of sex trafficking, and it's a horrific, horrendous crime. We've got a number of interviews on our website about it on our YouTube account, but we've got a lot of different people doing different things, and it would be great if they could, in some ways, work together. Yeah, it is. Um, one of my friends at Multnomah University uh, and School of the Bible, they have a, a project called the Isaiah Project where they, they help uh, give information to the youth of today about human trafficking because the, the statistics are just overwhelming. Yeah. And society here, especially my generation and the generation below me that is coming up, we don't know how much of a problem this actually is, how there's actually more human trafficking and slavery now than there was during the Civil War. Um, don't quote me on the exact statistics on that, but That's I just staggering. know. staggering. It, it is staggering, it is, um, because there's more population and because of how much uh, networking we're able to do now, it's just, it, it's just monstrous. And especially in Portland here, um, where the statistics, statistics are that we have more strip clubs per capita than Las Vegas. Um, and being that Multnomah University is right on 82nd Street, there, that's a, that's a huge, huge implication and, and problem here. Yeah. But, there, but there is a big problem. But there are people, as you look around me, see all of the people, hundreds of people here at the Justice Conference in Portland, Oregon, they're interested in justice. They're interested in seeing the right thing done. Mm -hmm. They're interested in coming together in the cause of Christ and, and spreading the gospel and, and loving our fellow humans and helping them improve their lives. Look around me. You see, all these people are here to learn what's going on. And so don't think that you're alone. Yeah, that is so true. Um, the, the people here, just being in this place, the energy and the buzz of the people, you go up to anybody and talk to them about justice and talk to them about what they're doing. Um, 
just like me, everyone here probably most likely has a story and a passion, which is why they're here, which is why they're spending their Friday entire night and all day Saturday um, just being with, with other fellow believers who, who believe in pushing things forward. And they don't just have to be uh, Republican. They don't have to be uh, Democratic or Independent or from this and this. It's, it's coming together and understanding that there is a need out here and apathy is just, it's what kills, um, especially my generation. Uh, we have video games, we have, we have uh, TV, we have movies, um, we have social networking sites, Facebook, and we're on it constantly. And I have to watch myself even because when I'm on these things, I start creating these pseudo kingdoms, these fake kingdoms where I start investing myself in. But the reality is there's so much more to invest your life in. Um, and there's so much more out there to just to awake, awaken ourselves and you can call it enlightenment, but it's that's just really more of a term back then. But now it's more of a, a modern movement that we uh, <laughs> we're coming to a short end here. It, it really yeah, is. We feel like time is short. And one of the things we're, I'm excited personally about is I'm seeing young people that are on fire, that have, have got the vision, that understand the meaning and the feeling and the spirit of the gospel of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. to go out and make disciples of all nations. They, they, want, they want to learn the Bible. They want to learn what scripture has to say. But more than that, they want to put it into practice and they want to live it. Uh, I think the young people today are really looking for deep truth truth that impacts lives, truth that can change their life and others. Uh, they want to see something that works. And they're, they're sick and tired of playing religion. They want the gospel. Would, would you agree with that? I would definitely agree. We, we want something authentic. We, we grew up seeing so many fake things uh, in, the, in the media, uh, even watching our, our, our parents, people who come from broken homes. Um, they're given the empty promises and they're given the, the, the false conclusions that okay, we're going to be here, and we're not really people of our word. And so seeing my peers and how um, they work with uh, youth also, how we do some discipling, um, uh, a lot of my friends, we go out um, every Saturday to do, we just talk to people about Jesus Christ, and we pray for them, and we just love on them. We'll give them 10 bucks, and we'll say, here, you know, and they'll go, what's the catch? And we go, there is no catch. They're like, what church are you from? Um, he's from this church, we're from this church, we're from this church. They're like, oh, so you're not trying to like get us in there? We're like, no, we just we just want to love you, and here's because Christ loved us first, and I've seen more impact of that than anything else um, that I've seen, and I haven't lived very long, but uh, it, it really speaks to them. And when you see them start crying and giving them a hug and saying, "Wow, you know, someone authentic is out there," that changes lives and that changes people. Sounds like the one word is authentic and just real love. Love that, that doesn't have an agenda. Love that doesn't say, well, I'll love you if you join my church or my denomination or my ministry. But here's 10 bucks because Jesus Christ loves you and you don't have to come to my church this Sunday. You don't have to go to his church this Sunday. I just want you to know that Jesus loves you. And, and that, once I've seen that, and I know you have too, that really touches people because then they see the gospel. Yeah, that reminds me of one of the exhibits in there. And there's so many that are just mind-boggling. I can spend hours just talking to them. But one of them is called uh, Laundry Love. And all they do is they grab like $50 of quarters, go to a laundromat and say, hey, we're going to do your laundry for you. God bless. And that is so simple, yet it is so impactful to the people that I don't know why we're not doing that more. I don't know why I'm not doing that more. And so it's just so fascinating to see that. Praise God. What's in your future? <laughs> Um, a lot of things are my future, um, yet I can only do so much. Um, I love music. I love playing music. I love playing for worship teams. I love youth camps. I love photography. Um, but I see myself, um, after graduating, I want to get a master's in conflict resolution and get into that field of really understanding and being that peacemaker between uh, two conflicting parties and being an agent of reality. And... Um, in five years, I hope that I can continue doing missions, uh, work with my mentor, go, uh, go to other countries and set up resolution centers and train leaders to deal with conflict in their country, tie away from uh, the lawyers and the courts and the, the secularized um, societies there. And um, I'm actually planning to go to Africa with uh, Africa New Life uh, Ministries and go to Rwanda. And uh, one of the things we're doing is 
we've donated a lot of books, uh, 20,000 books there, and we're going to finish cataloging the, the projects. But doing something like that and going there, um, I can just see myself going anywhere and uh, working with missions and working with people because you know, I'm half Mexican, half white, and I, I seem to blend in pretty much any culture. And that actually helps you because you can talk to both cultures. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I was in the Philippines uh, this summer uh, for two months, I, I got so many implications of like, are you half Filipino? Are you half this? I'm like, are you half Chinese? I'm like, no, I'm just half, you know, whatever. And just, just by making that effort to, to be with them and mingle with them, they didn't see me walk with a, an American group. Um, well, then again, I did go by myself and I didn't go with the mission agency. And I went to this church and said, hey, teach me everything you have about evangelism and discipleship. They said, okay, live here, go with us here, eat with us here. And I did. And by integrating with that and being the skin color that I am, it's just kind of like a weird, you know, nice tan. It's good. Um, I don't... I, I don't really know how to say I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with my people like I'm gonna stay with all whites or I'm gonna stay with all Mexicans or blacks or whatever. It, it's just people are people. We're all made in the image of God. We have the Imago Dei, and nothing can take that away. So if somebody's watching this interview right now and doesn't think they can make any difference, what would you tell them? I would say, hey, just stop and listen and look and observe what's going on. Walk the streets of Portland and see the need that is out there. Um, and just do that, have compassion. Um, but so it's, it's not that easy because in order to give out love, you have to be able to receive love and especially know who Christ is and how he has loved us first. Um, in Second Corinthians 5.14, I believe it says, for the love of Christ compels me. And so often we think, okay, maybe it's just a, I have to do a choice all the time, but I, I'm starting to wonder, do we just become compelled by knowing Jesus Christ and the love that he's poured into us. Um, I don't think when I walk and see a person that, oh, I gotta have to love them now. It, it, it just happens. Um, I don't do that perfectly, but for someone who, who wants to do that and know, I would just say, observe, listen, and just love God and be. Be the gospel. Be the gospel. You too can make a difference. I'm Dave Adams, TJN1. The Jesus Network, you too, we all together can change this planet.